Hey guys, Joe here, and today we are taking a look at a very, very mighty fine pistol. If you're new to the channel, thanks for checking it out. I hope you enjoy this one. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Maybe consider subscribing and using the Amazon affiliate links you see down below. You'll help the channel grow that way, and I won't have to beg you to, you know, just give me a pile of cash. Unless you have a pile of cash. Do you have a pile of cash? Give me a pile of cash. Cash, 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 cash. Today we're taking a look at a pistol that was brought in by a customer of ours who wants us to sell it for him. And this is a Dan Wesson firearm. As you can tell by the fact that it says Dan Wesson firearm. What's funny is he came in and he was looking for a less expensive carry pistol. And we showed him a couple and he actually settled on a Taurus G3. Excuse me, he actually bought a Security 9. I apologize. And he was wanting to move this pistol on to somebody else because let's face it, you know, it, it was sitting in his safe. He said he was never going to use it. And... I mentioned to him that we have a pretty good track record of selling some expensive firearms. You know, we had a couple of Wilson Combat Nighthawks and, you know, a couple of other high-end model pistols. And we said, sure, we'll take a chance on it. Bring it in. We'll set it out and we'll see what we can do for you. And with today's uh, craze right now of people buying firearms, it shouldn't take too long to sell it. But let's take a look at it. This is the original box. It's a little dusty. needs to be cleaned off. But that's not my job. That's the store's job. But it's a very nice, very well-made plastic case. And inside the case, you do have a custom fit for the firearm, a magazine, and all your documentation up here. Now, as you guys know, CZ actually bought Dan Wesson, or Dan Wesson bought CZ. I can't remember which way it goes. But either way, they are now the same under the same ownership. And because of that, there's a lot more money to be had for development and product marketing and all that good stuff so more pistols like these can come to market very very nicely packed i'm going to pop out the spare magazine which is very nice and before i actually say what it is i think some of you can guess based on the design of the magazine put it in the comments with the timestamp and five all right let's take the firearm out first thing we will do is drop the magazine we'll do a safety check as you can see, nothing in there. Absolutely nothing. Lock it back. Do the old physical check as well. And we will then... Oh, yeah. Let's take this out. You get a really nice bushing tool in here, too. But we're going to take this out. Set it aside. And take a look at the 9mm. Hopefully you guys got that. But the 9mm Dan Wesson Valor. It's designed to be a carry piece, believe it or not, because of some of the parts it has on it. Although, you know, some people will say carrying a 1911 is not the wisest thing in the world. I disagree. I carried one for quite a long time, and I like a full-size pistol, as you'll see in one of the upcoming videos on another pistol that I'm doing videos on. But yeah, first indication that it's not a 45 would be the design of the magazine. It's designed so that the follower, number one, it sits forward a little bit because a 45 and 9mm are different lengths, but also they pinch it here. I think it helps hold the round in the correct positioning to feed into the chamber. Let me give you a couple of specs on the Dan Wesson Valor 1911 pistol, okay? Number one, they are all hand fit. I thought the Kimbers were. I was corrected in the comments. However, I do know that for any fact that the Valor series is hand fit, they're hand polished, and they're hand blended, which is really nice. It has low profile VZ grips. Most 1911s do have a slightly fatter grip, so this gives you a little bit of a more narrow frame, even though it's one of the most narrow frames on the market for a pistol anyway. The finish that they use on their guns, this is not a Cerakote, this is called Black Duty Finish. Basically, it's a process that bonds to the components, so I'm not 100% sure how the process works, but they say it's very different from spray and bake. So, it's not a Cerakote, they call it a duty black or a black duty coating. It looks really nice. Obviously, it will show fingerprints and oil from across the entire solar system because that's what these guns do when they're properly oiled. One thing I'm going to point out as we are looking at this firearm, I noticed it as soon as I opened the box. This particular one is missing its magwell. 
Don't know if he took it off because he was running some kind of custom part on it or if he just ordered the pistol and he got one without the magwell. But either way, these magazines are designed to work with a flared magwell that's supposed to be on the bottom of the gun. Now you can still order these brand new from Dan Wesson on Dan Wesson's website and I think through CZ's as well. And when you do, be prepared to pay at least $1,700. 9mm starts at $1,700 and go up to as much as $2,700 depending on how you finish it. This is more of your entry level version of the gun. It's a 9mm and it has the black finish versus the stainless finish. However, being a base entry version, it still has really nice stuff. It has Trigicon sights, combat or tactical rear sight. As you can see, it's got a single Trigicon dot in the bottom of the sight underneath the notch, which is really nice because it just helps you find your sight picture very easily in the darkish. Front sight is also Trigicon and pretty easy to pick up. Skeletonized hammer, however, it's got an enclosed long trigger on it, but it is adjustable. So you do have some adjustment availability. They undercut the trigger guard a little bit so that it comes back farther. Normally it would come down a little bit sooner and meet to where you can see there's an edge on the checkering on this particular firearm. This has 25 lines per inch. It feels really nice and it matches well with the back strap. This gun is going nowhere unless you don't know how to control a 40 ounce 9mm. Feel in the hand, it feels as good as any 1911 I've ever picked up. The finish and the fit. Listen to this. Now people were throwing shade at me because uh, I mentioned in the Kimber video how rough it was and how it felt like the slide was actually sticking to the frame. And it was because that's what happens when you have steel and aluminum, two different processes, and you need to wear one in to make it mate better to the other surface. But this being a hand-fitted and hand-polished gun, that's better than any of my private sanding sessions that I've ever done where I've taken the coatings off. So this is a gun that literally feels like you don't have to do anything to the slide. And for the money, you shouldn't have to, ding, dang, dang it. It is a half-length guide rod, which I do appreciate. Not that I would ever do it, but, you know, I've heard people, you know, using the front of the gun to manipulate the slide. If you had to put it onto a cable or something, for example, I'm using a piece of plastic here, so it's not going to hurt it. But if you needed to rack the slide because you were one-handed, you could do it up against the edge of a counter, a refrigerator, whatever the case may be, and get into the action. Speaking of action, this is a 1911. 1911s are single action. 1911s also have the best triggers, period. If you want to argue that point, please get off the internet. It's a, not a point for contention. There is no trigger on earth that feels as good as a 1911 because it's one of the most plain triggers you'll ever see. It doesn't have trigger bar springs. It doesn't have multi-functions up here unless you have a Series 80 internal which has the drop safety, but even then it doesn't affect the yoke design. This has a yoke that goes back, it pushes, drops a sear, lets the hammer go forward. Super simple, super easy, and very tunable. But just by bending the forks on the yoke, you can affect how far back it goes before it'll drop the sear. With the adjustments here, you can adjust for the reset. This thing is just an infinitely adjustable pistol. That's why here we are in 2020, and this gun is still at the top of the game. It's one of the most expensive platforms you can buy, and there's a reason for it. It's one of the best, period. Clocks are nice. 1911s are a different story. I'll fight you on that. So let's take a look at the trigger and see how it goes. Here it is. Boom, there's the wall. There's a release. This might be a lighter trigger than even the Kimber or the Desert Eagles that I was looking at, and it feels amazing. That is just beautiful. Reset. Right there goes right into the next shot. And again, being adjustable, you can change it to where the reset could be farther in or farther out. That is amazing. Can I say it's amazing again? Yes, in fact I will. It's amazing. So let's go ahead, we're gonna pop the top off. 
So it does give you a tool and it is a dual sided one. So this one is set up for the nine millimeter platform and the other end is for larger platform firearms, typically the 45 or possibly even like a 10 mil if they do it. So number one, I always like to cock it and lock it. That way it prevents the slide from moving back. Take my tool. I'm gonna do this with it vertically, sorry. comes right off. Probably didn't even need it. But what we'll do now is we will rotate the bushing back the other way. Pop it out and set it aside. So you'll bring it back to the far back notch which will allow you to disassemble the firearm. You just line it up and as you're doing that you push the pin or the entire slide lock out. I would be very careful that you do not mess up the firearm, the finish. So I'm going to use my tool here and very carefully pop it up. I don't want to put an additional idiot mark on here if I don't have to. There's your guide rod, there's your frame, and there's your slide. This is the Browning drop link system. As you can see, it does say it's a match grade barrel on it. it. Just means that it's hand fit and it should be more accurate. Very nicely finished. This opening is the same size for a 45 as it is for a 9, so the outer diameter of the barrel is the same as a 45. The inner diameter is cut to a 9mm. Ramped barrel with the ramp attached to the barrel. That makes a big difference in a 9mm 1911. If you want to know why, watch this video up here where I shot an ATI 9mm without a ramped barrel and it was horrendous. Two nice lugs up here for the lockup as 1911s don't use the breech, they actually use locking lugs. Taking a look at the slide, it does look like they actually stamped the serial number inside there. I don't know how easy it is to see. But that's nice to see. That way you can make sure that your gun is numbers matching if that matters to you. It's very simply finished. It doesn't have front slide serrations, just rear ones. But they are canted forward a little bit, which I do appreciate. And here's a closer look at the sight. As you can see, as I said, it was a Trigicon setup with a blade Trigicon front and a um, LPA-ish style. But it's also flat front on the sight, so you can again manipulate it on your pants leg or a hard object. Finish on the inside is immaculate, as you would expect from an almost $2,000 pistol. And that brings us to the frame. This is all forged steel. This is not... MIM or mold injected or metal injected molding or I can't remember if the right way of putting it But you're taking a look in here and this thing is very clean. Additionally, this thing is a series 70 style internal I've been clarified as to the differences, but this is series 70 internals The gap between the ramp in the frame and the ramp on the barrel is so minuscule and so minute that that thing should have no problem feeding anything that you want to dump in there. I think this thing should run most anything that you want. Again, some guns that don't have that barrel style will just jam up like you would not believe. Finishing inside the frame is additionally exceptionally nice. It's obviously been fired a couple of times, but not enough to cause any wear on anything. Could also attest to the black duty coating that they put on it. There you go. That's a field stripped Dan Wesson Valor 1911. So now we're going to go into the reassembly. And this is a place where you got to be a little bit more careful because... Obviously with this finish and the price tag that this gun commands, you don't want to screw it up. So carefully slide your barrel in, let it lock in, put your link in the right place, put your guide rod in, put your recoil spring in, and the flat end on this particular one goes onto the guide rod as opposed to into the plunger. Sorry about that. This is exceptionally tight on the guide rod to ensure that it doesn't rattle around, which I'm fine with that just means it's going to be a tighter pistol. Another thing I always forget to do first is put the bushing in so we'll do that now. Slide it in between a couple of the coils on the spring. There we go. 
that's a little bit difficult with some guns, especially if it's got a full length guide rod. Next thing you do is take your frame, take your slide. You need to hold the guide rod since it's a half length and make sure that the eyelet on the link is in the down position. Take your gun, very carefully put it back together. Once you have it started past the point of there, you can go ahead and do that, which will bring it back to the install location for the slide lock. Don't push it all the way in and then try to slide this up because that's how you get your idiot mark. So start it back to where you have room. As you can see there, you can see my finger behind it. You just need to get the end of it into the link a little bit and then bring the gun back to your install position or your reassembly position. If it doesn't go in the first time, don't beat on it. Don't do anything stupid. Just pop it back out and continue again. Because of how tight the finish was, I didn't want to damage it, so I used a flat tip screwdriver to push the plunger back while pushing the slide lock in. It's not a bad thing to do. It makes sure that you don't put a big scratch on the side of the slide. Bring it all the way back, lock it into position, take your plunger, <clears throat> and I didn't even need to use the tool, but it was there last time, so might as well try it. Rack it a few times, make sure you're back in action. And we're good to go. So that's about it. Let's take a look at it in the overall scheme of things. Is it a good pistol? Yes. Is it worth two grand? That's up to you to decide. I don't think so. I think the used price that this thing's going for is well worth it. I think it's like 1300 or something like that. That puts it into a higher class than most people would pay for a 1911. But when you're talking about hand fit and hand assembled guns, it's actually a very reasonable price, especially in the 1911 market. That's what you're going to pay for like a Sig Sauer Scorpion 1911, and that's mass produced or a few other manufacturers that all of a sudden I can't think of the name of. In comparison, we had a Wilson Combat 9mm, and its original price was $4,000, and we sold it, I believe, for like $2,400, $2,500. But in that respect, I think this is a nicer pistol than the Wilson Combat was. So, I'm going to get out of here. This is a nice pistol. If you have the ability to get one, shoot one, and enjoy one, I highly recommend it. Let me know what your favorite carry pistol is down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and share it with a friend. I do apologize about my voice. It started going out a few days ago, and it's just getting worse. It is not that thing that we can't talk about. It just, I'm losing my voice. It happens to me every now and then. So, anyway, you're going to see another video on an FN, and yeah, so I'm going to get out of here. And, as always, I'll talk to you later.